Well, hello. Good afternoon, Dixie Belle paint fans. It is Melissa from the top drawer. I am on live with you every Wednesday at 3 p.m. So this is my time to hang out with you and talk about all things paint. Welcome. Welcome if you're a first timer joining me. Um, I am Dixie Belle's newest brand ambassador and I am once again, Melissa from the top drawer RVA. So I'm going to hop right into these things. I got a lot to show you today. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff. If by chance I don't see your comments when I'm working, I always come back in after, rewatch the video and answer all the comments I might have missed. But Dixie Bell is also on here with me and they can help me out and uh, answer any questions that they might have on there that I don't get to see. So how are you? How, how's everybody doing today? It's um, Canada Day, y'all. It is Happy Canada Day. I am actually Canadian, born and raised. Um, I am... Um, I've been in the States now for 13, 14 years. So I'm actually Canadian. So happy Canada day. I hope that you're enjoying your day off if you're in Canada. And if you're watching from Canada, say hi and let me know you're watching from. Oh, somebody's watching from Montreal. I love Montreal. I love old Montreal. It's so absolutely beautiful. All right, so let's jump in and get started because we've got lots of fun stuff to do today. And I am going to go um, old school, my typical Mad Hatter style with stripes and whimsy and color and fun. I haven't done one in a while, so I thought I might as well get on here and maybe update y'all if you haven't had a chance to see one of my Mad Hatter pieces. We're going to get funky today. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening today. I have this cutie little cabinet. It's like a Queen Anne style, and I have cleaned it with white lightning. After I cleaned it with white lightning, I took my Dixie Bells Boss. Boss is a primer that blocks odors, stains, any bleed through and tannins that might happen on your piece, okay? You can see that this piece right here is a very red wood. When I cleaned this little puppy the other day, it was literally bleeding red tannins out of the wood. So when that happens, that tells me that I need to make sure to prime my piece properly and use my boss because if I don't use boss, what's going to happen is it's going to bleed through and you're going to get stains and all sorts of yucky things on your piece and you don't want to have that happen. So today we are going to stain the top of this piece using our Dixie Bells No Pain Gel Stain and we're going to paint the piece in a whimsical, beautiful Mad Hatter delight on the bottom. It's going to be super cute. I think you're really going to like it. It's a tiny little piece and it's kind of funky it's got some funky legs so we're gonna we're gonna funk it up and make it look really cute all right so i know that you probably have seen me use gel stain before um but i get a lot of questions about gel stain probably more than anything else that i do i get questions about gel stain all the time i love no pain gel stain um, the reason I love no paint gel stain is because nine times out of ten I'm painting right here in my dining room in my house and I don't want to sand anything. And with no paint gel stain, you do not have to stand, sand your piece before you get in here and use it, okay? Um, you also can put it over top of shiny wood. You can put it over like a laminate plastic wood top. I've done all of those things. I often do two coats um, when I do my gel stain because I like a thicker coverage and I'm usually hiding a lot of damages and crazy things on my pieces. So let me bring you in closer. See this lid? I need to put it down somewhere safe because you all know I'm going to sit in it or step on it and that's not going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be super messy. <laughs> all right, so let's show you this little table, okay? So this little table has been cleaned with white lightning and prepped with boss on the base. I did not prep the top with boss. Do you want to know why? Because you don't need to. If it bleeds through, this is actually black. Colonial gel stain is black. You're not going to see it. So I use my boss on the base of this piece, not the top of this piece, okay? And there's a couple ways you can apply your, your no paint gel stain. You can use a t-shirt like rag to apply it and wipe it on in the direction of the wood grain or you can use these little fun applicator pads. Dixie Bell sells these um, amazing little applicator pads that kind of have like a squishy sponge inside and a really nice terry cloth outside. And they work really well for pulling across on top of a surface. I often use these when I have a very big surface, but here's the deal. This is a tiny little surface. I'm just gonna lickety split cut this thing in half <laughs> and be super thrifty and save this piece for the next time because I might need it again and I don't need that huge pad. It would be wasting my supply. So I wanna be a thrifty girl and save my, uh, save my pennies. So I'm gonna cut that applicator pad in half and it's gonna do the job just as well as if it was a giant applicator pad, okay? I do wear a glove because gel stain is 
it's a stain. <laughs> it's going to stain your hands. It's going to get in your fingernails and ruin your manicure forever. So let's see. I've got my little half applicator pad for my gel stain and I've got my colonial black gel stain. Okay. I'm doing this inside my house. I did not sand the top of this piece. All I did was clean it with white lightning. I'm going to tip it a little bit so you can see there are marks on here. There are scratches on here. And actually I'm going to bring you in nice and close. You're not even going to see my cute little face. I'm going to bring you right in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing so that you learn the best of your ability. Okay. So here's the top. It's a nice smooth surface. It's been cleaned. It's ready to go. When you're using gel stain, it's very easy. You're going to take your applicator pad or your t-shirt like material. All you're going to have to do is dip it into your gel stain. See it's black. It's like pudding. It's quite thick. Now I know a lot of people like to apply this with a foam brush or they like to brush it on and wipe it back. I do not. I want to hide all of this yuck. Okay. There's some watermarks on here. There's uneven surfaces. There's a chip back here. I'm going to completely cover this with gel stain and you're going to be able to see how amazing it's going to look. This wood is a red kind of a mahogany wood. Okay. And what you're going to see when I go over it with my gel stain is how simple and fast I like usually one coat of gel stain on a nice deep dark wood like this. And I'm going to show you why. Let me bring you in even closer so that you can see. Can you see how pretty that looks? You can still see wood grain through the gel stain. Okay. You can still see that pretty, pretty wood grain, but I'm hiding all the ugly. Look at that old yucky wood. Look at this beautiful, rich, rich wood. Super, super amazing, right? Super easy to use. Um, let me move my scissors. Here we go. I do like to do my edges first because I like to kind of come in and make sure that I get under this little lip. So I'm going to come under the lip and there is a, another lip on here. There's actually like a double, a two kind of a piece. So I'm going to get right underneath and just wipe this on in one direction, covering that wood. If I get it below, it's not a big deal. I can wipe it off before I paint. It's not going to do anything. All right, let's turn it a little bit so I can get over here and see this side. I'm just coming in around the edge and I'm making sure to cover that whole entire surface with my gel stain. Okay. If you felt like you needed to get a little bit more defined and you didn't want to, um, you know, come in close to your edge, you can use one of these little guys. Let me turn my little case around here, grab some on the edge. All you're going to use is a tiny foam roller if you want, or a tiny foam brush. If that helps you define your edge, that little bit better so that you're not going to get it lower. That's easy peasy. You can totally do that too. You're just covering over top of the existing piece of wood that's already on there. I'm not worrying about really precise lines. If I want to say I'm, I'm just wiping it on. All you're doing is wiping it on over top and covering that old yucky wood. It's that easy. You guys look, I'm almost done. So I've done this half. I haven't done this half. You can see now how much of a difference that really is. Can you see how pretty that is right there? Super, super pretty, right? So you're, you're cutting your corners. Basically all you're doing is just applying this right over top. You're just cutting your corners. You're just getting rid of that ugly red. I'm darkening it up. This is colonial black gel stain applied with this applicator pad. And that's all you do is wipe it on. You can seal this with your clear coat. You can seal this with your gator hide. Um, but if you wanted to add another coat, you're going to need to make sure that you wait long enough in between for it to get dry because it is an oil based product. It is going to take a little bit longer to dry, um, than your, your chalk mineral paint will. But, once it's dry, which depending on your area, your heat, your humidity, if you're doing this inside, outside, I like to wait at least a good 12 hours um, in between coats. All I did was hit that with one coat and I'm going to leave it with one coat. I like one coat of gel stain. Let me find a little home for this applicator pad so I don't sit on it. So now you can see one coat wonder of colonial black gel stain over top of red cherry wood that had water damages, scratches, nicks, marks, and now it looks like a million bucks. How much better does that look? And how fast was that? Super fast, right? Super fast. So that is all I have to say about that.
Gel stain is very, very easy to use. Um, this little can lasts a really, really long time, okay? So the base of this piece was bossed. I actually bossed this two days ago. You don't need to wait that long. Um, you could probably wait until it's dry and then get started on your project. But I waited just because I didn't have anything else going on. So now I did get a little bit of this gel stain on the base over here where I'm gonna be painting today. So I'm just gonna wipe it off so that it's not thick and chunky. And I'm gonna be able to paint right over top of it. It's not a biggie. If you wanted to be super neat and tidy and tape off your edges, you can. But guess what? I'm not a neat and tidy girl. I'm super messy. <laughs> so this is the way that I roll. All right, so let me move everything out of the way. We're gonna get resituated, and I'm going to show you how we're gonna paint a Mad Hatter style table today. And it's gonna be super cute. I hope you guys are really gonna like it. This is kind of a, um, a style that I do a lot, or I did do a lot, and it's kind of made my, I don't know, my look very popular. There's a lot of people that like to try and do this Mad Hatter design. And I'm going to show you how to do it. But first of all, I need to move away all of my little paraphernalia and my junk and get comfy on the floor so that we can paint together. Let's see. You've had peeling with Boss. I have not had peeling. Maybe if Dixie Bell is on here, they can chat with you about that. Um, this has been actually just one coat of Boss on here. And we are good to go. Um, look, gel stain. Let's try and get that off before I get it on my face. I have put one coat of boss on here and I'm going to show you on the sides. I've actually already painted over it with white and I have zero blade bleed through it all. And this piece was a bleeder, y'all. It was dripping red onto my floor. It was pretty gross. Okay, so now you can see this pretty little top stained with gel stain. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it get dry. When it is dry, I'm going to use my satin clear coat and we are going to be covering this with clear coat. But for the base of this cutie little table, isn't it sweet? Look at the little legs, it's so cute. For the base of this table, I did do a couple things to prep for today. Because I didn't wanna be sticking my arm inside the cabinet and painting where you couldn't see, I did paint this interior square in cobalt. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue, and that's going to be on the inside of this piece. But as always, I don't wanna bore you by sticking my hand in a piece or doing sides or behind when you don't need to see that. You're here to learn, and that's what I'm gonna teach you today. You love my Mad Hatter colors? It can get a little wild and crazy in here, but it's always fun. So, I also have taken my fluff. Fluff is just basically white, and I've done one small section here, and one small section on the other side. And this is where my stripes are going to live. Around the stripes is going to be gilded with gold leaf, and then the rest of this piece is gonna be fun and whimsy and colorful. All right, y'all ready to hang out with me and enjoy the, enjoy the ride today? Let's see, my light keeps going out. I think it's time for a new light. So, we will get started. Once again, clean with white lightning and entirely prepped with boss. There's a couple things to make note of when you're doing stripes, okay? You can go over this with your original color, which for me is fluff, or you don't have to. It's up to you. I feel like these lines are pretty straight. If I have any bleed through, I can easily touch it up with my other paint, but I'm going to be doing black and white stripes. So my black and white today is going to be caviar and fluff. Let's see, where's my caviar? Caviar is basically black. So onto this little surface right here, I have laid down my blue painter's tape and I haven't even been perfect about it, y'all. There's like some space up here. I can fix all the details later. I just wanna get it down here so that you can see how I'm gonna do it, okay? So, when you do your stripes, you could come in here with your fluff and put your fluff down. What's gonna happen is if you put your fluff down here and then later on when you paint over with your caviar, you're not gonna have any bleed lines under your tape. But I think I'm gonna be all right and we're gonna take a chance today and we're gonna get crazy and just jump right in. So I have a tiny little artist brush right here and I'm just gonna come down and cover this area with black and white, okay? I'm not going mashing into the, the sides of the tape. I'm just kind of staying straight up and down. And remember, I'm not even really finishing these edges because that's all gonna be gold leaf and it's gonna be beautiful around the ombre. So let me just do this really quick 
probably going to take two coats because I'm painting a black over top of a white, but this will give you an idea of the stripes. Who's painted stripes before? Have you guys done stripes before? Do you love them? I'm a little bit obsessed. I go in phases where it's like, I feel like all I do is paint stripes and then I get tired of them. <laughs> then I don't paint them again for a long time. But I haven't done a Mad Hatter style table in a little while. So I'm overdue. And they're always so much fun to play with and paint. They're really a lot of fun. So when I do the gold leaf and I kind of come around the edges, it's going to be over top of the color that we're going to use and it's going to be over top of the edge of the stripes. So this is always the way that I start my Mad Hatter. I decide what area I'm going to put those really pretty stripes and gold in and then I, I base kind of my piece around that. So knowing that this piece is going to be really colorful and there's not a ton of room on here because it does have these big scrolly legs. Um, I just knew I kind of wanted to put it in the corners a little bit. All right, so let me put my brush down and spray it with water so it doesn't get crusty. And we're gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna show you how to do the stripes. All right, how's everybody doing? Are we hanging in okay? You can get a little bit lower. Do you wanna see a little bit closer? How's that? Perfect, perfect. And I did put glasses around here somewhere. This is how I roll, y'all. I sit on the floor, I open up all the things that make a giant mess and it's safer down here. <laughs> it's safer on the floor than if I was, see, if I was up on a table, I would have already dropped this over off the table. It would have been crazy. All right, so remember cobalt is in the middle because this is where we're gonna have this inset part of the table. And I did one more small section over here where we're gonna add stripes. So I'm gonna show you because I think that, you know, some people might wanna learn how I do my stripes. It's pretty generic, it's pretty basic. Um, I always rip off one piece as a, a marker and I always kind of tape off this first section so that I kind of have a, like a line to go by. All right, so let's put this tape. Mm, do I wanna tape that one there? Let's start on this side, just because, just because I said we can. Now remember, we're gonna be coating this whole edge with really pretty gold leaf. So once I lay down my tape, I put my marker, and this just helps me. I know some people eyeball it and they can get away with eyeballing it. I just kind of want to know where my stripes are going to lay. And I might not even do this whole section right now because I want to move into the ombre. And I can always come back and do the stripes later. So we will probably just lay a couple down and then stop. Because I kind of want to paint up to the edge with my ombre right there. See this little lip? So I just want us to get in here. So I'll probably end up having to touch it up. So let's do one more and then we'll move on to the ombre. So when you stripe off an area, it's up to you. You can do it before, you can do it after. You can paint this entire piece in ombre and then come back in and decide where you want to do your stripes. It's your call. You, uh, you are the boss of you when it comes to painting. It's just the way that you like it. So there you go. These are where my stripes are going to be. Up and down, over here. We're going to come into this edge. We're going to be black and white. Well, now that I've come this far, I feel like I have to finish it because, you know, it's in my head now. So we're going to paint some colors today. I have Muscadine Wine, I have Bunker Hill Blue, and I have, of course, that beautiful, beautiful cobalt. And this piece also includes a drawer on the front, which I've prepped with Holy Guacamole, and it's super cute. I want you to see this crazy combination of colors, and I want you to know that it's really not as wild as it seems. They actually go together super, super well. All right, so there's your stripes. That's all you need to do when you're doing your stripes. You can, <laughs> I'm gonna have trouble today, I know it. Something's gonna fall. Um, you can do this before you do your ombre, you can do it after you do your ombre. I always kinda like to lay out my, my stripes so that I know where I'm gonna get started. So let's play with some paint. What do you say? How's it going? All right, hi Rima, how are you? You love my Mad Hatter? Okay, so here's the drawer. So this drawer is gonna go in here, of course, right here. I have filled the holes with Dixie Belle's mud. This enables me to remove the hardware. I had a really big bat wing piece of, of hardware. And I don't like, I'm not, a, I'm not a bat wing girl. So I took this off and I filled the holes with my Dixie Belle mud. 
I then painted this whole entire drawer with holy guacamole. And I have two options for the stripes, okay? I can decide if I wanna do gold or if I wanna do the blue Caribbean. It could go either way, I haven't decided yet. And whenever we don't finish on here, make sure that you go in above my head. I have linked my Facebook page so that you can come over and like and or follow, and then we can finish it up on my own page if we don't get it done today, all right? So I'm gonna take this out and let's get started with paint. So three colors for this project. We have Cobalt, Bunker Hill Blue, and Musket I'm Wine, okay? I feel like because the interior is blue, I'm going to start at the base with my Musket I'm Wine, and we're going to come up into Bunker Hill Blue. Then this will be the interior, which is Cobalt, and I can kind of trail it down over here. I think we're gonna also gild all these edges and do some fun stuff too. So we will see. How long do I wait for the paint to dry before I add the tape? I painted that, that cotton, or sorry, the fluff that I did on the side. I just did that this morning at like 9.30. I don't wait very long. I just wait till it feels dry to the touch. The longer you wait, the less likely you're going to have um, any tape pull off your paint. So if you're impatient like me, then you might have some minor accidents, but you know, it is what it is. So if it feels dry and it doesn't feel cool, you're probably safe to go ahead and tape over top of that. If you wanted to be super safe, you could wait um, entire day, but I can never wait that long. I can't, I have ants in my pants and I wanna paint all the things all the time. So, today you will see me using my flat medium brush. This is a synthetic brush by Dixie Bell. It is the brush I use the most, the most. I use this brush for everything. So we have this little table here, which is being prepped with boss. And I'm just gonna come in with my Musket on Wine. I'm gonna start at the feet. Musket on Wine is one of those colors that I don't think a lot of people use. Um, and I don't know why, because it's super, super pretty. It's also very, very pigmented. So Muscat on Wine doesn't seem to need as much paint as some of the others. Um, you're gonna find that with Dixie Bell paint, the pigments are very, very deep and they cover really, really well. So you are able to get away with using less amounts of paint on your projects because you might only need a coat and a half, not two coats. So I'm just coming in and doing my initial coat. When I do an ombre blend or any kind of blending, I usually do all the first coats down initially. After those first coats are down, I then come back in with my brushes, a separate brush for each color, and then I will ombre my colors together. By doing this, it enables you to do two things. It lets your paint get dry enough so that when you are actually going to ombre your colors together, you can lay down your second coat without having a worry. Okay, I'm gonna put my head down because I need to peek under the table. Make sure I got that entire back legs. Um, but the other thing that when you wait for that first coat to initially go down and then you move on to your next brush and your next color, it gives you an idea of planning. So by looking here, I can go, hmm, do I wanna bring that musket on wine up? Do I wanna bring cobalt down? You know, it gives you the opportunity to kind of make up your mind with what you wanna do before you have to do it. Look at that cobalt, how amazing is that color? That color, oh, so good, so good. Okay, so again, another brush, right? A brush for each color. My brush is being dampened because I actually already painted with this today, so it's already wet. We're just gonna jump in and I'm going to continue this cobalt coming out the front of this piece. So, because this is a piece designed by me with really no rhyme or reason behind it, I can decide what I wanna do. I get to be the boss of me and figure out what I wanna do. Do I want to bring the red up, the musket on wine, and bring it in here and then bring the bunker hill? or do I wanna do Bunker Hill into the cobalt? Let's bring some Bunker Hill blue over, I think. I think, I think that's what we should do. So we're gonna put this over here, and we're gonna open up our Bunker Hill. So Bunker Hill is another great pigmented shade. It's another one of those colors that goes a super duper long way. You can um, get away with, with one coat a lot with these dark, deep, deep colors. All right, so I'm gonna put my little, ooh, I almost took you for a ride there with my mic wire. Put my, put my glasses on and see, let's see. 
do 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 missing any comments people that are afraid to use these unique colors you know what i think you you should everybody should use unique colors i think everybody should you know get at least one colorful piece out every couple weeks because otherwise you're gonna get bored why not be colorful why not be fun why not have a great time with your paint i mean for me i always paint color i always paint bold i always paint lively pieces it's what makes my heart happy but um i do do farmhouse i can do farmhouse everybody can do farmhouse but when's the last time you had fun and did this this is fun this is freeing and this is design and then when i sit on the floor and I open up my gilding waxes and i get out my metallics and i have so much crazy stuff going on in one piece it makes me super super happy i just really like it this is my favorite way to paint so if you go to my facebook page you're gonna see a ton a ton of color a ton of color okay so this is bunker hill and i'm again i'm not pulling my colors together yet okay i'm just putting them where they're gonna live all right i'm just letting them kind of figure out where i want to be with these colors and now you can see why i did that interior spot before i came on because i didn't want to have to like stick my head in there when i'm doing live painting that would be crazy all right so i'm just putting my bunker hill down and the other thing is you're going to see how really good and how really easily bunker hill blue and muscadine wine combine you start to learn when you paint with these crazy colors like me which colors blend together super super easily um there's some colors that are just they just go together like peanut butter and jelly they just work super well together so all of these gorgeous jewel pigmented tones they're just so delicious they really really go well they really do they're not hard when i'm going to be doing the ombre blend you're going to see how fast it is and i think while well, i'm sitting here on the floor right now looking at this leg remember we talked about taking the time to see if your colors are living where you want them to live i'm going to pull this muscadine wine up the back some i want a little bit more muscadine wine so on these back legs they're going to be a hundred percent muscadine wine and yes i will paint the back of this piece just not right now because that would be boring who wants to watch me paint the back of a piece that's not fun you want to see me do all the good stuff okay so this is better let me turn this to now you can see so now i've got the muscadine wine coming up a little bit higher at the back and it's just going to be i think a, a more fun blend with the bunker hill so let's turn this little this little table around this is going to get really hard to turn y'all when <laughs> i start getting paint everywhere it's going to be stay tuned for the chaos it's going to be crazy so i'm going to come back in here and paint the rest of this leg with musket on mine because i want to okay so here's the other plan this little piece right here where it's touching the white you can either wait right now because this is all going to be musket on wine so i can wait until i'm done my stripes and done my piece which i think is what i'm going to do and then i'm going to come back in with my musket on wine and gently do that edge there's no point in me getting fussy and starting to worry about what's happening in there um, with this color until I'm done my stripes because the stripes are priority in this corner. So once the stripes are on and done and perfect, that's when I'll come in with like a, a tiny artist brush. And then I will be able to decide um, how I'm gonna fix that edge, how I'm gonna do that edge because I have a ton of them sitting here on the floor. All you need to do is make sure you have like a tiny little sharp brush and you're gonna be able to get into that edge easy peasy no problem and if you didn't want to fight with that edge the other option is to when I'm adding that gold leaf completely cover that edge with gold leaf that's entirely an option as well that's kind of like the easy way out when it comes to um, you know doing these stripes and connecting it to your colors because that's probably what scares people um, is how are they gonna you know how are you gonna connect those stripes how are you gonna connect that color well, it's not hard. You just kind of have to find the way, that's the easy peasy way of working around it, for me anyways, is by adding this beautiful gold leaf kind of circle. It's gonna take it and make it super pretty. And then it becomes easy. You don't have to fuss with edges and lines and worry. So this is back to the Bunker Hill. Remember, I have a separate brush for each color and I'm not blending them together yet. So 
Muscan on one, Bunker Hill, Cobalt in the middle. I think I'm gonna do some Cobalt up here as well because I kind of want some brightness on the corner. These little pieces, yes, they're crazy and wild and colorful, but they still have to kind of like match on the sides, if that makes sense. You still want to think about the total design and how it's going to come together. So I'm just going to come up here to my edge where I have my gel stain and just gently go over. How fast was that gel stain? How easy was that? So easy, right? I think people are scared of gel stain and they shouldn't be because it's, it's honestly probably the most easiest product that I use. Gel stain is, I mean, it's like, it's like you sanded. It's like you took all that time. It's like you fixed all of these things and you didn't. <laughs> you just wiped it on in like five minutes and it looks so good. So good, right? Okay, so I'm coming in here with my cobalt and I'm kind of like dabbing it into these little grooves and these little edges. I'm not blending yet because I'm going to have to make sure that my second coats are completely on there. But now you can get an idea of just how cute this is going to be. How cute is this little cabinet going to be? It's going to be so adorable. It's going to be super cute. These little tables. And you know, here's the deal. If, you, if you're afraid to paint color, pick a tiny table like this that is a minimal expense to invest in. You know, check your, your local auctions. Check your, your local garage sales, yard sales, whatever you want to call them. I think calling them garage sales is a Canadian term. I don't think Americans say that very often, <laughs> but check your yard sales um, and you will, you will find some really great little deals. And then you can play with color and play with some paint because you didn't put a ton of money into a piece. You know, that's kind of why I like to do these small pieces with you guys on the paint page so that you can learn some fun techniques and, um, learn how to do something really, really whimsical and fun. See, I told you it's going to get hard to turn. Okay. So see this little spot right here. I'm going to come in here, I think, and do a tiny little bit of musket on mine in the middle, just to darken it up just a little bit, just a touch. So how are we doing? Is any, anybody celebrating Canada day today? Any of my fellow Canadians on here doing anything fun for Canada day? All of my family is up there. Even my son lives up there. He's 21. Um, so I have many, many, many friends and family in Canada. And since the borders are closed, meh, I haven't been able to see anybody in a while. So fingers crossed that, you know, everybody stays safe and they open the borders soon so that I can go visit my family. Because I miss everybody. I miss my Canadian friends and family. All right. So what do we want to do here? I think I want to bring this beautiful musket on wine just a little further over. Just a bit. And then I'm gonna bring this bunker hill up. So remember, this piece is gonna have gilding wax, it's gonna have shine, it's gonna have gold leaf, it's gonna have all of the things on one tiny little table. Because why not? It should. Okay. So this is where we're at. We did a top with gel stain in colonial black. You learned how to paint off some cute little stripes and let's add a second coat really fast while we're sitting here onto the stripes so that when I rip them off, if we can get this side dry enough, I'll even show you how I do my gold leaf, but I have a feeling that we're gonna have to play that game over on my own Facebook page later on today. So make sure if you haven't yet, gone over to my Facebook page and follow me. You have to follow. I know there's no like button. Facebook is a strange beast and they actually took away the like button. So there is a pinned post on the top of my page where you can still like it. But if you follow it, it's the same thing. You still get to see all the goodness and color that's going on on my page. All my new items hang out with me while I do live painting. Okay, so now I've done two even coats with a tiny puppy dog hair. Let's take that off. Two even coats of caviar over top of fluff around this gorgeous ombre. All right, are we hanging in? Are we still liking this? You think you're gonna try something fun like this? 
I think you should, because when it's done, you're going to see how fabulous, how fabulous it's going to be. All right, glasses on, I can see what everybody's saying. All right, <laughs> Rima, you're so sweet. <laughs> All right, and if you are a local retailer of the Dixie Belle paint products, please feel free to drop your link in the comments below um, so that people can shop and buy these fun and fabulous colors. So let's do the second step of my ombre blending, okay? Second step for me on my ombre blending is to go back to the original color, make sure that all of your wood is covered, okay? Remember we talked about Muscadine on wine having um, that really great coverage. The fact that you probably don't need more than a coat and a half for your project. You're able to really see easily, and because I primed with Boss, that my paint is pretty much covered already. Like, you saw me put that initial coat on. I barely just touched it now for the second coat. And this is already enough coverage to cover my wood and not have any trouble. Let's bring it a little closer, take you in for a ride so you can have a look-see. Check it out. What do you think? Super cute, right? Great coverage because these darker colors have really, really good pigment. You're going to get away with using less amounts of paint. All right, so now comes the tricky part, turning this around without covering myself in paint without falling over. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure all of my muscadine wine is where it's going to live. I got caviar on my legs, but that's okay. It's supposed to get messy when you paint. You're supposed to. It's not as fun if you stay clean. I'm gonna make it a fashion statement for all clothes to be covered in paint because <laughs> that's how we roll at this house. Okay, so now that my muscadine wine is down, blending, this would be easier if I was being more defined with my edges, um, but I'm, I really want this piece to be kind of all helter skelter and not really, you know, one way or the other. So now I'm just gonna start pulling, what did I do? Did I just put paint on my face? I did not, I'm all right. <laughs> it wouldn't be alive with me if I didn't have like big, smear of paint across my forehead or something. So I'm just going to start with the next color that touches the muscadine wine. And it's going to be different in different areas because I have two different colors of blue here. So I have my cobalt. Remember, I already painted the interior of this square with two coats of, co of cobalt already. So I'm just going to touch it to make sure that it's covering all of my wood. Gosh, I love this color. It's so stinking good. This color is so rich and pretty. I mean, seriously, this and tree frog green might be my new favorites. I don't know. We'll have to see. So I'm just touching my cobalt and now I'm going to go back to my bunker hill because the bunker hill is where we're going to have to start blending some of these together. And I just want to make sure that everywhere I'm touching this paint has got at least enough paint to cover the wood. If I happen to miss something or a small little tiny area, I can always fix that up easy peasy off camera. But I just wanna make sure that all of my wood is covered. All right, so that means I have to go under here. Just to make sure. I do have a spray misting bottle filled with water here on the floor. And that is gonna help you start to blend. Okay, so we have muscadine wine here on the floor and we have this beautiful, beautiful bunker hill. I'm going to go back to my muscadine wine, okay? And I'm going to wipe off my excess amounts of paint because I got a lot of paint on these brushes right now, a lot of paint. I don't want a ton of paint on my brush. I'm just gonna blend, but these colors are so similar in the jewel tones that this is not a hard blend, all right? It's gonna be lickety split fast and you're gonna see how fast I do it. I'm not going to spray my piece. I'm going to spray my brush, okay? And it's not even gonna be sopping, it's just dampened. And I'm gonna feathering, feathery light around where my blue and my muscadine wine is gonna to touch. And I'm gonna go back and forth between those two brushes and we're gonna pull these two colors together. Yes, this is harder on 
legs. But it's not impossible. This is something you can do. It's just practice, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna go to my Bunker Hill brush because remember, I have separate brushes for each color. I'm blotting it off on the paper towel and I'm just gonna lightly pull it down. Do you see how far down my hand holds my brush when I change to blending? When I'm painting, my hand's up here. When I'm blending, my hand is down here. This gives me more control over what's happening on this piece and where my paint is sitting so that I can feel what's pulling. So I can feel my brush start to drag a little bit. I'm gonna spray it. And again, I'm, I'm trying to do this corner without getting my face in your way. So tell me if you can't see. I'm trying my hardest to make sure that you can see all of these things. See how light my hand is? This is the other reason why I paint on the floor, you guys. Because <laughs> I crawl around like a wild child trying to get all my paint blended. So going back and forth to Bunker Hill and Muscadine Wine. Up and down, side to side, whatever works best for you, blending wise, and you'll learn that leg is entirely perfect. Let's go for a little ride down here so you can see how cute that is. See how easily those two colors blended together? Super, super easy. This is not a hard blend. Yes, it's on a rounded leg, so it is more difficult than like a flat, flat, flat surface, but because those two colors are so close on the color wheel and they go so good together, I've done muscadine wine and cobalt and muscadine wine and Bunker Hill before, and it's super duper easy to blend. This is not hard because they just work so good together. Like you're making your job easier by picking colors that just are blendy together. All right, back to the Bunker Hill. You're controlling your brush, right? See how far down I'm holding again? Super far down. Loving that, loving that blend right there. So pretty. I'm gonna put a tiny touch more of Muscadine Wine on my brush and just kind of pull it over. Oh, so good. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, now, excuse my head while I jump around because I kind of have to see behind this leg again so that you can see what's happening. All right, I need to be able to see down here. Sorry, sorry. I'm in the way. In a perfect world, I would have different camera angles, but I'm not that techie. All right, perfect, perfection, this is good. I love this. So, see the curve on these legs? The curve on these legs tells me that I'm gonna be doing a ton of really, really delicious gilding wax on here. When you add gilding wax to this, when this dries, I'm gonna be able to show you Okay, I have a little handy dandy cart behind me. I got fancy this week and um, bought a really cute cart to wheel all my things around on the floor. So gilding wax goes on after your paint's dry. I obviously can't do this yet. If we can get it dry enough, I'll show you. But when you apply this, so this is the beautiful turquoise teal and the reformulating right now, I know they're not in stock. Fingers crossed, it's gonna be really soon. They're making a beautiful new gemstone mousse for you that's gonna blow your socks off. But when you take your finger and you rub this wax on here, these curved corners then become like a 3D, almost like a holographic look. They're so, so good, so good. So hold tight, I swear, there will be wax in your future. You just have to uh, wait for them to reformulate, restock, and then you can get your hot little hands on some gemstone mousse because it, it's so good. It's super good. I got to try some um, and I love it. Love, love, love it. So now we're back to the cobalt. Now I should put my glasses on because I'm probably missing questions again. I'm sorry. I never, I never look up here enough, all right? Let's see. You can find your local retailer from that link above my head. Yes, ma'am. You can totally find anybody you need to up there. Um, 
And like I said before, you can always drop your link in there too if you're a local retailer so that people can find where you are. So they can come shop your store. All right, so here we go with this pretty cobalt. I'm just making sure that all of my wood is covered and I'm gonna go back to my Bunker Hill Blue, okay? So remember, I'm going back and forth, back and forth with my brushes. This is pretty much dry, this Bunker Hill already. So I'm just going to wet my brush, spray misting bottle, kind of blot it off a little bit on my paper towel. And I'm just gonna to start to see what happens when I pull these two colors together. It's very simple to blend a blue and a blue. My recommendation to you is if you are a new blender, if you are just starting with ombre blends and you wanna learn how to do it exactly perfect, first of all, there's no perfect, but second of all, stay within the same kind of colors. A blue and a blue works great. Gray and gray, just, just look at, at tints. You know, if one's darker than the other, it's just gonna make your job super duper easy, okay? So I feel like I need to add actually a little bit more Bunker Hill down here. Just to pull up into that cobalt. Okay, and I'm actually gonna have to go back to my musket on wine because I messed up this corner a little bit. So redo, we're gonna fix this right now. It was so perfect. I had to go and touch it and mess it up. There we go. We're coming back now. We're coming back. See how far down again I'm holding my brush? See how far down? That control, holding it that way gives me that control, allows me a lighter hand to ease your blend. Okay, this side is now ombre blended, two coats, looking super, super delicious. How good does that look together? Cobalt, Bunker Hill, Musket on wine, really good. Now, when I hold up my Holy Glockamoly drawer, you can see how fun and Mad Hatter this little table is gonna be. It's gonna be such a cute color combination. Let's keep moving along. All right, so we're gonna turn this around. Lord, so many things in my hands. Okay, so now we go back to the front. So we're gonna work here on this little blend. This is the Bunker Hill and the Cobalt. My bunker hill is pretty much dry. What's happening now is I'm just kind of pulling that cobalt over. It's an easy blend, remember, because they're super close. This is not hard. There. Any questions about blending? Anything that I can help you guys with while I have you here? My undivided attention? Let me know. I'm always happy to help. I like to teach. I like to talk, obviously. <laughs> and now is the time to ask me. Well, you have me on here. Because if I don't see the question just at this minute, don't worry, I will come back in. I'll get you. I'll get you soon. Okay, I have to turn this a little bit because I need to see what's happening in this little corner. I need a little bit more Bunker Hill over here. And I'm just going to pull it up into that cobalt. Okay, so this little corner right here has more cobalt than Bunker Hill. I'm just going to kind of come back in with that brush and pull it over. Same with over here. I kind of want more cobalt on the middle. Perfection. Super good. Okay, so let's go up here where we have this beautiful musket on wine and cobalt and pull it together. Again, not too far off on the color chart, but still pretty easy to blend. Just marking off my brush, dampening it with water. Short, easy movements, feathery strokes. Just enough to pull the two colors together and then I can go back to the cobalt. and pull it over this way. What do we think? Cute, right? Cuteness, super cute, super cute. All right, and I see a tiny little bit drop down there, fixed it. All right, let me move this around and we're gonna continue going 
to blend this side. So we have to blend this little section right here, okay? How are we doing? Everybody still hanging in? You still enjoying my little ombre blending? Let's see, somebody's probably asking about my wheels. I see somebody mentioning Harbor Freight. Yes, those wheels are from Harbor Freight. So I am just gonna touch this area with my musket on mine so that it's dampened because I'm gonna come in here with my Bunker Hill and try and pull these two together. It's pretty darn dry over here, which means I need to add a little bit more paint to this area. If it's super dry, your blend's gonna be hard. That's why I use a spray misting bottle to keep it dampened. So now you decide what you wanna do. Do you wanna pull the blue over like this? Do you want to go back over and bring your musket on wine in? Because they're so blendy together, they just go easy, easy peasy. And this piece might even have a little bit of black wax when I'm done. I might get in here with my black wax and add depth to it in that way around the corners. But I do like to pull this blue over. I do like to see a little bit more of that than the other. Tiny touch more musket and wine on here. It's just back and forth until you're happy with what you've achieved. Now remember, this is all gonna be gold leaf over here too, right? So all this is gonna be gold, which always goes super well with those jewel tones. Good, this part I'm good with. I like this little blend that's happening right here. We're gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna go back in with my Bunker Hill and I'm gonna try and pull this cobalt in. Let's switch it, let's go cobalt down. Again, blue into blue, super, super easy peasy. Not hard. Okay, so now I've done this gorgeous blend, this gorgeous ombre. I've taken my blue, I've taken my musket on wine, I've pulled them all together, and I am good. I'm good with this blend. And I'm getting carried away now. I just kind of keep going. This could suck you in. You could be blending for hours, but I'm gonna stop because I am good with this. So let me move this over. And we actually, before we do that, let's take this off and do some stripes, okay? All right, we're good? We're good. So under here is fluff. Under here is my stripes. Remember, all this is gonna be gold, but I can't do that part until it's dry because I apply my gold leaf with clear coat. See, I didn't, I didn't bother going back in with the original color, which was um, fluff, and I'm doing okay. I see one tiny mark, that's gonna be an easy peasy fix. No worries for there. It's not hard. These lines are nice and straight. I'm digging the stripes. What do we think? Throw me some love, show me some hearts. Let me know that you're seeing my vision come together a little bit and that you like it, because <laughs> I like it at the end of the day. There we go, what do we think? So cute, right? Okay, so my gold leaf will come in and I will put this gold leaf all around here, almost like a, a half moon, okay? It's gonna come dripping down here and then over. So my gold leaf then becomes the barrier between my ombre paint and my stripes. This is an easy, simple trick, y'all, to hide all of this. You're working easier, right? You're working smarter, not harder. This is super easy to put here once it dries and have this gorgeous gold accent. It's on the sides, so you're not like overwhelmed. You're not like, ah, oh, it's on the front. You know, there's so much going on. But I like all the things. I want all the things to happen on my piece. It's my fave. So let's turn it around to the front and see what we've got here. So now you can see this little vision happening. You've got this beautiful cobalt in the middle. You've got your gorgeous musket on wine. When I get in here with these gilding waxes, that's when the magic really starts to happen. It's so much fun to play with wax. I think gilding waxes might be my number one favorite product from Dixie Bell. I think they might be. I like the shiny things. I'm all over it. So 
Right now, let's move on to this drawer front. And I want you to tell me what you think. So now you can see holy guacamole. Beautiful combination with these colors, right? Very whimsy, very fun, super fancy pants. It's gonna look really, really good. So I painted this this morning and taped it off. My question to you is, what color should I make these stripes on the front of this? Do you want me to paint them? Why can't I see comments? There we go. Moonshine Metallics in Caribbean or Moonshine Metallics in Gold Digger? What's the, what's the choice here? What are we thinking? What do you love? Do you think that on top of this pretty, pretty, holy guacamole, I should do blue or I should do gold? Now, keep in mind the hardware is going to be gold. I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use it. It could possibly be this, um, or it could be another gold. It's gonna be gold. No matter what it is, there's gonna be gold hardware on here already. I see lots of golds, 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 golds. Anybody for Caribbean going once, going twice, let's do gold. All right, sold, sold on gold. So I have painted this drawer front in holy guacamole, okay? Here we go. The holy guacamole has been dried and taped off. I did that this morning. Holy guacamole is that gorgeous green, one of the faves. I am now going to show you your easiest way to get nice, pretty metallic stripes. Metallics are a fussy creature. I think a lot of people have trouble with um, metallics and the, the main concern seems to be people have a hard time doing it streak free. The trick to getting a gorgeous metallic is to use a like-minded color underneath. So if you're painting in Caribbean, you should probably start with say Antebellum Blue or Stormy Seas, something close to this. Because this is obviously gonna be a contrast to this, gold and green is not far off, okay? It's not very far off. So you will use less paint when, uh oh. You will use less paint when you have a like-minded color underneath your metallic. But here's the other trick. A new brush, y'all. I always keep one brush aside. One that's brand spanking new like this guy or one that's very close to new. See how nice and smooth and slick this brush is, right? Nice and shiny and new and slick. This is gonna help minimize your brush strokes. If you used this, which is hilarious, there's another brush stuck on it. If you use this to do your metallics, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be streaky and like straw and not smooth. If you use this to do your metallics, it's gonna be nice and even and smooth and lovely. So keep a special brush just for metallics. One that doesn't get beat up like I beat up all of mine um, because it's gonna help you stay nice and smooth and even. So there you go, that's my handy dandy tip of the day. So I have my Moonshine Metallics in Gold Digger. I love some Gold Digger. I use it on a lot of pieces. I've taped off my holy guacamole drawer. I'm just making sure my paint is down, okay? I'm not gonna do this whole stripe on the bottom, you guys. I'm just doing this top piece. And why did I have to do it with a junky lid? Okay, so I'm just lightly staying in one direction. Oh my gosh, you see that lid? See how it was hard for me to open? When I opened it up, I got crunchies in my paint, so we're gonna have to fight with that. That's okay, real life people, real life. I'm just lightly going to the edge. And now, now that I've done edges, oh, this is little chunks. Now that I've done my edges, see how smooth and keeping my brush stroke? Super, super smooth. See how nice and slick that is? because of this new shiny brush, okay? Keeping that separate brush just for your metallics will literally save the day every time. I always kind of do the edges first and then I'm just gonna stay in one direction, nice and smooth. 
I'm trying to get those junky bits out. What do we think? Are you seeing how cute that is? Metallics are gonna take more than one coat. It's the nature of the beast. If you want a nice bright gold shine, you're going to need two coats. So here's the other trick. It needs to be pretty darn dry. If I came in here right away and added another coat, it's gonna pull off my original coat of metallic. It's gonna move it and you're gonna get weird streaks and you're gonna be sad because you've ruined your hard work. So just wait, I'm gonna to have to be patient. Wait for it to dry. There's a puppy dog hair, let's get that off. Dogs, children. Um, once you paint on these two beautiful coats and when you're staying in the same direction like this, keeping it nice and even, you're gonna love your stripes. You're gonna love your metallics because this just makes your job so much easier. So I'll put this aside, let it get dry, and then we will add the second coat, and then we will gild all of the edges, paint all of these gorgeous edges, and you're gonna to see some magic happening. Ooh, it's getting dark outside. I think it's gonna rain. Let's see if I can get an area that's dry enough to show you some gold. Let's see, let's see. Do, 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 do. I might not have any over here, but you know what I do have hiding over here in the corner? is a sample of the new moose. The new beautiful gemstone moose that is coming this fall to Dixie Belle. And it's so good. It's so good. The pigment in this moose is the bomb. It's so bright and so beautiful. I'm wanting to find an area that's going to be dry enough that I can show you. Okay, this little foot's dry. Let's bring you down here and you can see some cutie little gold on the feet. So the gemstone mousse that's coming this fall is not like your wax based um, product that you're used to. If you're used to this, the solid piece that you, you wipe off with your finger or a brush, the mousse is more fluid, it's more movable, and you're almost able to like paint it on it so good okay so i'm just deciding where is it dry enough that i can show you you can use a brush and gently paint it on the edges you can see this gorgeous pigment with the new gemstone mousse now here's the deal this is what i like to do i'm going to take a piece of paper towel and i'm going to spray my finger and move this beautiful wax into a gorgeous gorgeous highlight i just I, you know me i like to finger paint i like to get my hands in here and get really messy and do fun things look at that gold look at that gold shine can you see how good that is look at how pretty it's so pretty so add that to your fall list y'all because it's coming this fall 2020 that is one good thing that's coming this fall <laughs> this 2020 has been a you know a bit of a a downer um, so I am excited about gold mousse and gemstone mousse and I am excited for you guys to try it because the pigment is it's so good you can come in here if you decided to paint it on say these little details it's almost like you can paint it on like paint or you can pull it across with your finger I like to move stuff around I like to I like to play with my paint so when I'm playing with paint I'm moving it. But you can do the same thing with your gorgeous gilding wax and add that shimmer, add that shine. It's gonna come in a variety of colors and I hope I've piqued your interest in it because it's exciting to me. I get excited about shiny things. <laughs> so, so there you go. For now, I think I am kind of hitting the wall because I need to wait for everything to get dry. Once it's dry, I'm gonna be able to come in here and touch all of these things with wax. I'm gonna use my beautiful teal, my turquoise teal wax on the blue. It's gonna get shiny, it's gonna get shimmery. I'm gonna be peeling back that beautiful stripes that we did on the drawer front with holy guacamole and beautiful gold digger. I'm going to be adding some gorgeous gold leaf to this side of the piece. It's gonna come around like kind of like a half moon 
And today, you guys learned how to do a really cute little ombre Mad Hatter table. You learned about gel stain. I mean, could I pack any more stuff into this short little time? I don't think so. So many things, so many things. All right, everybody, so I hope you had fun watching me today. I'm gonna give you a quick little recap of all the colors used so that if you felt like trying any of these products, you can. You can always shop um, from the link above my head or you can click on that link and it will take you to your local retailer so that you can find out where to purchase your own Dixie Belle paint products. Um, today's colors, Colonial Black on the top in my gel stain, remember that really pretty gel stain up here? Look, so pretty, one coat, one coat of gel stain. I applied it with an applicator pad and a small foam brush so that I could get into the edge. I like a thicker coverage when it comes to my gel stain. I like to cover up all of those flaws and crazy things that are up there that I don't wanna see. And it's super simple. It took me what, like five minutes to do that whole thing? Super easy, right? So we have gel stain colonial black, caviar and fluff in stripes, bunker hill blue, cobalt blue, and muscadine wine. The front of my drawer is going to be some beautiful, beautiful gold digger in Moonshine Metallics mixed in with my Holy Guacamole. So Holy Guacamole is under those stripes, but you can't see it because it's taped off right now. It's going to be super stunning. It's going to be super shiny and it's going to be all of the things and I'm completely happy. And it's getting thundering and lightning outside. We're going to have a little bit of a storm hanging out here in Richmond, Virginia. So I stopped at just the perfect time. And that also means my puppies are gonna break in because I have one that is afraid of thunder. <laughs> so she's literally banging on the door right now, telling me that she's, she's scared and she needs her mama. So I have to go be a puppy mom right now. If you have any questions as always, please send me a message. I'm always available to help. And um, if you have any other questions, you can always contact Dixie Bell on their website. Come follow my page, the top drawer RVA. I linked that above my head as well. And you can watch me finish this live over on my page after the storm rolls through because I don't like painting in the dark. <laughs> I hope you had fun. Take care, everybody. Have a great Canada Day. Happy Canada Day to you, all of my fellow Canadian friends. And I will be back next Wednesday at 3 on the Dixie Bell Paint page. Take care. Bye.